In this demonstration we're going to create a wood moulding with a grape motif on it. We're going to individually model the components, do any editing that we need to do and then we're going to combine this with the moulding profile that we're going to create in another part. Finally, in order to show you the real power of the ability to work with multiple models in ArcChem, we're going to take that one single piece of moulding with the grapes on it and we're going to curve it around an arch design. The vectors that you can see on the screen here were all sketched within ArcChem. In order to manage them better, I've arranged them onto multiple layers and given them different colours. This allows me to show and display only the ones that I want to work with at any point in time. First, we're going to model the area of the leaf. In order to help us do this, I've created some construction vectors that you can see here. We're going to build the leaf in three stages. First, we're going to use these construction vectors to create the underlying form. Next, we're going to take and cut out the shape. And then finally, we're going to add the veins onto the leaf. The underlying form will be created by taking these two vectors and this third vector and using a function to generate a shape from them. In this case, we're going to go one stage further and actually take this vector as well and use that to control the z-depth of the shape as it flows in between these lines. If we activate the grayscale view, hit calculate, you'll see in a few seconds that ArcChem will generate this shape based on those four vectors. If we want to see that shape in the 3D view, we can tile the window and look at both of them simultaneously. Now I'm going to take the outline of the leaf and we're going to chop that out like a cookie cutter. So we just pull up the vector parameters, say that we want to trim that and we've got the shape of our leaf and the underlying form combined together. Finally we'll take the veins and just add a simple dip shape into them in order to generate that profile. There you can see that our leaf has been created. Now we'll switch layers and go on to one of the different shapes. So let's undraw the leaf and the construction data and switch on the layer for the vines. The vines are again are just simple closed vectors. What we're going to do is just grab all of those, bring up the shape editor and just merge those in with what we've already got. Each of the individual pieces will be calculated separately and blended together and should give us the result we're looking for. So there we can see in the grayscale and also in the 3D view that those shapes have now been created. Lastly for the modelling, let's do the grapes. So we're just going to open the grapes up and these have already been grouped together and assigned sizes that we can start to blend in with the rest of our model. By using the grayscale view we can easily see the ones that have been built and the ones that haven't and very quickly start to generate exactly what we're looking for. By giving them slightly different heights we end up with a nice variation in our finished model. At this point in time we've almost finished the design but we're going to use the sculpting tools to tidy it up a little. So now let's go into the 3D view and work with our model. You'll see in the way we built it, there's some definite lines where some of the edge branches meet with the main branch. What I want to do is use the sculpting tools to just smooth those out. This ability to go in and manually edit an area very, very quickly in ArtCam is extremely powerful. And you can see I can literally just start to go in and blend those areas, including the parts where the smaller branches meet and also where we've got these other larger branches coming into the main area. Very quickly we can blend those so there's no seam and they look completely natural. Once I'm happy with the way this looks, I'm going to save it. And we can reuse that in a little while. So with the grapes saved, next we're going to open a part which has the vectors in for our standard moulding profile. What we want to do is build this moulding. You can see the vector for it down here and then combine our grapes with it. Now I've used the ArtCam in order to generate the vectors for this, but I could have imported it from another design package or I could have taken this data from my customer. To generate the moulding shape, we're going to pick our two drive curves again, pick our cross section, and use our function in order to calculate this. All ArtCam is going to do is take whatever profile we've got here 
and sweep it along these two curves in order to give us our piece of moulding. You can see what we've got in the grayscale, and if we look in the 3D view, you can see the part that we've got there now that's been created for us from those vectors. Now we've created our moulding shape, let's combine the grapes with it. If we come back to the 2D and load the file where we created the grapes, you can see it's possible for me to combine any combination of ArcChem files together to create a new design. If I wanted to, I could even combine just one small piece of this. In this case, I want to take the design as it is, I'm going to position it accurately, I'm even able to create a different sized version of it by changing the Z heights of this, and then we're going to hit paste. And the grapes are combined with the geometry that's already there to create a new model for us. Notice that they perfectly follow the shape of the moulding. So we've been able to generate this part here by combining the two different ArcGAN models together. We could now take this part and create multiple copies of it in order to create different lengths of moulding that we wanted to cut. We could generate CNC toolpaths on it then and actually take it and run it on our machine. However, in this case, I want to show you going one stage further and actually using the design we've got here, not just for a flat piece of moulding, but actually to create an archway. We're going to capture the design that we've got in this part here by using a box that we've drawn around the model. I'm going to ask ArcChem to copy the relief that's under that box. So this 3D image has now been captured. The actual 3D model has been captured by ArcChem and put onto the clipboard. We can now go into another session of ArcCam, one that I already have running here, and you can see I've generated a simple arc which is going to be our archway. Now because ArcCam knows what's on the clipboard, in effect that 3D data, I can paste it in. I could if I wanted to manually manipulate this to create a new shape or design. In this case though I'm going to use a curve, I'm going to select the curve here, and I'm going to ask ArcCam to fit as many as it can around that. Then we'll simply say finish, and we'll let the software do the calculation. This is just going to take it a few seconds now. What it's doing is capturing the data from the other part. It's multiplying it, as you can see from the design on the screen, five times, but it's also bending it and distorting it around this arc. This is a tremendously powerful function, wherein you think that you can now take any ArcChem model that you generate, whether it's something you've built yourself, or scanned, or something that somebody else has modelled, and you can distort it in order to create new designs within your part. If we look at the grayscale, there's the finished view. We can go into the 3D, and you can see the full part that we've got now from that design is this arch that's been created. Now to finish the demo, let's generate some toolpaths on this as if we were actually going to machine it. We'll select a boundary, go into our toolpath calculation, realign our view, so we only want to cut inside of that boundary, and set up some parameters for our toolpath. We can set up our material, in this case maybe I'm cutting it out of inch material, and now we can do the calculation. You can see ArcCam calculates toolpaths extremely quickly, even over something this size. This arch is four feet in diameter. Once we're happy with that, we can see our toolpath, we can out that, output that to our CNC machine. In this case though, I'm going to simulate it so I can see exactly what I'm going to get when this cuts. What this means is I can verify for sure the part that I'm going to get before I waste time or material running it on my machine. If I'm happy with the look and the finish of that, I could also generate a cutout pass for this, and then I could send it to my CNC machine and we'll be able to generate a very high profit, high quality item to sell to our customers.